Hey guys all, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So welcome to the Django REST of framework series with the ReactJS and Redux. So in the previous session, we have discussed about the project setup of the ReactJS and even we have set up the backend part. So in this session, let's uh, discuss how we can connect with our React and the backend framework. And we are going to implement one specific product model and we are going to render all the data from the specific uh, backend to the frontend application over there. So let's begin with the coding part of it. So coming back to my Visual Studio code, I have opened this specific uh, folder into the editor. Now, first and foremost, I'm just going to open this specific terminal over here. So I need to install few of the modules over there for proceeding further. So first, I'm just going to install those module into my specific front end directory. Like I need to install uh, React Bootstrap. We have installed React DOM, React Router DOM, React uh, Router Bootstrap. So these are the modules I need to install it. So let's uh, begin with this installation part for it. So first and foremost, I'll just come back to the CD front end directory folder. So I'm into the front end folder now. Now I'm just going to start uh, downloading it. So I'm going to tell npm install. So I need to npm install that is a react or UTR router over here. So I need to install the react router and I need to install the react or UTR router DOM. So you can install into a single go like a first argument and a second argument you can give like this and you can install it over there. So basically it is going to install the react router and the react router DOM for routing purpose. So once it is done we need to install the react router bootstrap as well. So we'll install that react router bootstrap and we need to install the axios also. So what is Axios? Axios is basically which is going to connect with your front end and back end uh, structure. So that is going to help. So I need to install first I'm going to install the npm install Axios that in npm uh, install Axios over there. So once I install the Axios is installed now. So I need to install npm react router uh, bootstrap. So I'm just going to tell I need to install react or UTR router and uh, bootstrap over there. So it is going to give us this specific navigation from this specific one page to another page. So it is going to help these specific packages over there. So we have installed uh, these uh, important packages. So once I open and show you the package.json file, so you'll be able to see here. So you can see we have a dependencies on uh, Reaxios, we have React Router and a React Router Bootstrap, React Router DOM. So all these things has been installed over there. So now I'm going to just simply start the server for the front end. So I'm just going to tell here as npm start over there. So I'm just going to start the npm start over using this one. So once I start the npm here, so now here, you can see here, I'm okay, I need to go inside this specific e-commerce website. So I'm going to come back to the CD e-commerce. So once I come, so I need to run the command npm start over there. So it is going to start your server over here. Okay, uh, my bad, what is my bad? So actually I have to come inside the e-commerce folder, then I need to start, I need to uh, start the specific packages. I need to install the packages. So that is what happened. So what I'll do here is I'm just going to stop the server here and I'm just going to delete this specific files. So this is my band. I'm just going to remove it. It's fine to show you the error and debug it because you, you may you might do this kind of mistakes. So make sure whenever you are, uh, so I need to create delete this specific node module folder as well because uh, it is not necessary. We need to come first inside the commerce folder, wherever we have a known module folder, there we need to start it over there. So now I'm going to simply run the same commands, npm react router, npm install react router. So you can see it is starting it, it started downloading it and it is completed. Then uh, again, I need to install the npm react router bootstrap. So I'm going to install this specific model. So even this specific model is getting downloaded and I need to install the Axios npm install axios i'll just click on to this command npm install axios so and axios also been installed over there okay so these are the four specific modules we have installed it so i'm just going to use npm start over there so it is going to start your folder now again i need to open a new folder so i'm going to just going to click on to this arrow mark and i'm just going to open the command prompt so now i wanted to run my backend server so i'll just go to this cd backend directory so inside the backend directory i am using a virtual environment right so I need to install the virtual environment. So I have used the folder name as my env here, virtual environment. My env slash sc, sc or IPTS script slash activate over here. So I'm going to activate ACT activate over there. 
So once I have activated, so I'm inside the backend folder now. So now again, I will be going to the ecom project folder. So I'll just go to the CD ecom project over there. So I'm going to tell here as a ecom project. So why it is not showing it? So uh, I'm going into ecom pr city project. Let's see whether it is working. Okay, it's not working it. So I'm inside the backend folder into my env folder. So okay, so I'm just going to press tab here. So if I just press cd and uh, press tab here okay there is only one okay first i need to go to the my env folder then i need to go to the specific ecom folder over there okay so this is also one thing so make sure while you are traversing from one folder or another folder see the specific path from here and work on to it over there okay so there is a one special model i need to install it so what is that cors course header course headers in django so what this specific core header django course header is going to do so this django core header is going to tell your specific front end server like uh, we are getting some kind of a calls from the back end folder so basically when i send some kind of api response from the back end so we are sending we are i'm just going to create one specific uh, json data and imagine that json data is uh, sending some kind of a response from this specific uh, views for a specific url so that specific data i wanted to pass it to my front end application and i wanted to show that the specific response so why this uh, front end is uh, not working i don't know so if i just come over here so starting a development server okay so i'm just going to let it start aram se not an issue or i can just uh, stop it over here so i'm just going to terminate it once i terminate again i'm just going to run the command over here npm start over there okay so it is going to start again and coming back to this it is asking me for select an interpreter so let's select uh, the 3.11.1 so it has been selected over there okay so uh, coming back to the concept over there so here we need to install the django course headers so what it is going to do it is going to help us uh, basically it is going to help us to pass the data from the back end to the front end and i can bind it easily from the front end part here so i want to copy this and uh, make sure you have activated your uh, what make sure you have activated your virtual environment then you need to install so whenever you are installing any modules based on the back end related you need to activate your virtual environment then only you need to install any kind of the modules whichever you, you you required over there okay so now coming back to over here so you can see if it is just keep on starting it so i don't know why it is happening if i just right click and inspect it and uh, so you can see it is starting it let's wait for it and i'll resume the video once it started okay guys so it has been started so you can see here so now coming back to my theme so basically what i did i just uh, open the specific uh, folder into my command prompt the front end folder and i started this server from this specific thing so then uh, it has been started okay if, even if you are getting any problem from the vs code if it is not starting it you can start it in that way basically you won't uh, get this specific error okay now coming back to the first thing so we have installed the models and uh, even we have installed the cword django course headers over there right so you can see once we have installed it so let's see what is document is saying here so document is saying is we need to add the cors specific thing into our settings.python file so i'm just going to copy this and come back to my backend e-commerce project and coming back to the settings.python file so the settings will you will be finding into the project folder itself okay here we have an load host the installed app so we need to paste it this specific uh, cors to over here and then i just to put a comma onto the top of it okay so now i have added the cors over there as here as well so then we need to add the middlewares for the cors so we are going to copy these two middlewares and i'm just going to paste it into the middleware section over there okay so wherever you feel good you can just paste it i'm just going to paste it over there okay so just paste as it is how you are finding it over there so this CORS is going to do a cross-site uh, request uh, headers. Basically, it is going to allow basically like class origin request. Uh, basically, we, like we are having a port number 3000 here, right? Here we are having a port number 3000. And our Django REST framework is going to, Django backend is going to run at the port number 8000 with the local host. So it is uh, basically, these are two different origins, right? So we need to tell our uh, front-end application as well as the back-end applications just uh, for whom you need to allow the access for whom you don't need to allow it. So this kind of the things you need to add it over there, okay? So due to that, we are adding this specific uh, cross headers here. 
So once you have been added this specific part, so what is the next step over there? So let's write one specific URL here. Let's create one URL. All the URLs we are going to create into the e-commerce applications over there. Okay. So now into the e-commerce specific application. So let's try to add some kind of a data and render it into our front end applications over there. So in this one, first and foremost, I'm just going to create one uh, specific uh, file. So I'm just going to tell here as a products. So let's tell you as a products dot Python file. So whatever you want, you can just give in products dot py file over here. So into your products dot Python file. So I'm just going to add some of the products over here, just for your understanding purpose, like how we are rendering the data. So it is a list product is equals to we are going to create a list inside a list. We are just going to add some kind of a data over there. So let me add one ID over here. So the specific ID I'll be giving it here and I'm just going to give it here as a product uh, name. So I'm going to tell you as a product name specifically, I'll just give it here as a camera here. The ID we have a product name and uh, I can just create one uh, category. So the category is going to come into the electronics electronics over there and I'm just going to create uh, the price for it. So imagine the price is some uh, 50,000 over here. Simply I'm just going to add some data and I wanted some three data with to be there here. So let's call put the comma after this one and uh, I'm just going to rename this as two and this is as uh, 50,000, 5,000. I'll just create here as a uh, laptop and this I'll be giving here as ID three. This I'll be giving here as uh, mobile. Okay. And I'll just tell you as a one like 50,000. So we have a three specific products into this specific product uh, file over there, right? So now let's come back to the views dot Python file. So in the views, what I'll be doing here is I'm going to handle it with the API part here. I'm just going to handle from the API here. So first and foremost, I'm just going to implement from the rest framework. I'm going to tell from the specific rest framework. Okay. From the specific rest rest, uh, rest frameworks dot response. I need to import the response over here. So this is the one thing then same from the specific rest to framework dot decorators. I need to import the API view over here. So we are going to work everything with the APIs, right? So I'm just going to add it here as a API view over here. So once I add the specific API view over here, so now we have some kind of a get request, right? So basically when I just go to this URL, so I have not started the server, right? So let me start the server. Okay. Let me add it first this one. Okay. So we are going to handle with everything with the API view here. So whenever we are having a API view, so we need to add as a decorator about the function name and uh, it is basically a get request. I'm just going to mention what is the method over there. Okay. Get request. So here I'm not going to use the JSON response now. So I'm just going to remove this JSON response. I'm going to use the from the rest framework response over here. So simply I'll just use it here as a RESPONC response that is hello and is over here. So I'm going to remove this save from here. Okay. So I'm just going to save this. That is a get root response is hello and is over there. So same way I wanted to import these products here. So I wanted to import this products from this specific file to here. Imagine this is some kind of a data we are getting from the database for right now. You just imagine this one and later we'll work with the real time data. So now we are just working with some static data over here. Okay. So I'm going to tell here from dot uh, products file. I wanted to import the products. So I'm just going to import the specific products over there. So once I import it, now I'm just going to add the same thing. That is, I'm just going to get all the products from the specific data. So I'm just going to tell you as a def and I'm just going to tell you as a get products over here. I wanted to get all the products. So it's going to take a request over there. So once we are going to get the request and we are going to just return the RES PYNC response over here. I wanted to return the specific response of the product. So what are the product we are having? I'm just setting the specific as a product. I'm just setting the specific products over there. So once I say, now I'm just going to start this server. So I'm just going to come here as a CD. Okay. First I need to activate the command, right? So I'm just going to tell it as a CD uh, backend folder. Then I'm just going to tell my ENV slash uh, scripts slash activate, activate it. And I wanted to go to the CD, my ENV. Then I'll just go to the CD e-commerce uh, project folder. Then I need to run the command python manage dot py run server. It is going to start your server over there. 
so you can see basically see this this is a traversing is very important you might get some errors like uh, the thing is not found something like that so in that case you need to be very careful like in which folder you are going to be there so wherever your manage.python py file is there so basically my see if i just close it that is getting disappear if i open my manage.py file is there wherever you are in which folder the manage.py file is there so you need to come to that space till that specific folder then run the command python manage.py run server over there so once i start it over there so i'm just going to start it over there you can see the thing is getting over here now if i just go to the slash api so you can see I'm getting here as a accepted render not set it over here. It is telling me some render has been not set, accepted render not set as a response over here. So we are getting some error here. So let's see what is the error. Now let's come back to this one. So we are just going to come back from this specific uh, thing. So we are just returning the response here. And whenever we are running, this is happening. Okay, we are not using basically there is not a request. And here we're coming back to the uh, URLs of it. So we have not created any URLs, right? We have not created any URLs uh, right now. So for that we need to uh, create this specific url so let's come back to your uh, applications urls.py file so basically this is going to remain same so now i need to create one specific path now so i'm just going to create one specific path so whenever i look on to the product whenever i want to get, go to the slash product slash so i'm just going to use views from the specific views dot i need to get this specific product data so i'm going to tell i wanted to run this specific method whenever i get this specific url and uh, just put a name is equals to i need to just get this and get product data over there so this is the one thing i need to do it over there so once i get it so then uh, i hope uh, now it is going to work fine because uh, something i'm missing it so okay i need to use at the rate here so i'm simply using a api so we need to use at the rate api here okay so there is a one mistake you can just uh, have a look on it so once i come back here now if i refresh it you can see now i got the django rest framework so you can see i got the response of the django rest framework hello anish you can see i got it over there and it is an application json now if i just go to the slash api slash products so you can able to see the three products which i have created into the products.python file whatever the products are there this product i'm just rendering through the api view of the django rest framework and i'm able to see this specific car data into our front end data here if i right click and inspect the element tool and if i just show you the network tab of it and if i just refresh again so you can see the api is getting called and basically if i show you the headers of it and you can see the origin is basically a get request here and uh, along with that and here you can see it is uh, using a response we are getting basically we are getting a preview of the json response here and uh, everything i am and it is an application json data here so this is the one thing you need to be aware of it now coming back to the front end part now so now anyhow i want this specific data to be displayed into our front end application so i wanted this specific data to be displayed to our front end app i need to connect me back end with the front end technology now that is in the react so that how can we do so i'm going to close all the thing from the right hand side now i'll just come back to the package dot json file that is what package dot json file here so when we are using a django rest framework and we are uh, using as a backend and we are using and this one we need to send some proxy so we need to send some kind of a proxy to our server over this we need to send some kind of a proxy to the server so i'm going to tell here in the top we have a name we have versions we have so i'm going to pass one specific uh, one specific uh, thing that is called as a proxy so basically whenever you are getting a request from this url so whenever you are getting some request from this specific url please ex accept it okay i'm just going to copy this local host url with the port number and i'm just going to paste it over here so i'm just going to put the comma here it means i'm just allowing this specific proxy to this specific application over here so my backend is running so whenever it is going to hit this specific api and this specific data should get rendered and it should get displayed over there so that is the one thing i wanted to do it right now now coming back to my src folder and this specific home component folder we have a navbar we have a footer section and we have a app.js file here right so here is a basically we are this is our app.js is uh, a main one specific thing main main specific thing is we are having it here 
So now what I'll do here is I'm just going to configure few of the things into my app.js here. So I wanted to configure a few things with the app.js and route the specific data based on the specific content over there. Okay, based on the specific pages, I wanted to route it. Okay, that is the one thing I need to do it. So for that, first I need to import the specific screens over here. So let me uh, do one thing. Let me do one thing. Before uh, doing this, first I'm just going to come back to my uh, basically an uh, header.js file. So basically we are so we don't have an header, right? We are just used as a navbar.js. So here is our navbar here, right? So now I want something like when I click on to this, it should go to some pages. Basically, it is a React application. It's a single page application. It should not uh, uh, refresh the things, right? So first and foremost, I'm just going to remove the unnecessary things from here. So what is the necessary things I need to remove it here? So I'm just going to remove this uh, two tags from here. And uh, and I'm just going to keep it here as a new user. So I'm going to keep it as a new, new user, something like this. The action will be basically a login here. So I'm going to keep it here as a login. And uh, I'm just going to keep uh, this specific here as a sign. Okay login and a sign in sign in is basically this one login or a sign up so i can just keep it here as a login and a sign up over here so it is going to sign up a new user and uh, here i don't want this specific url i'm going to remove it i want something here with the logout okay so this is the three things i want to just keep it so here i wanted to just keep it here as a cart right now so i'm just going to use it as a cart that is we have a e-commerce card home page cart and a new user so let it be this search i'm just going to save it over here so you can see now we have the only those specific data here right now and coming back to the concept of the thing so first i need to link through the urls over here so i'm going to import the first thing that is a link container so i'm going to use the link container from here so basically when i was working with the last time the project we are using link container in that uh, right now in this specific latest uh, latest uh, code the latest uh, versions that specific things are not working it here so i have debugged with that specific thing so you can use this specific uh, code for routing purpose from one page to another page and how i can load one specific component from one page to the another page we are going to see that thing right now that is very important as uh, for uh, building an application let's look on to that part now okay so i'm going to import one of your other things from uh, here so what is the first thing uh, i need to import it there so first thing i need to import the link container from the specific react uh, router so i'll just turn here here as imp so i want to import what i need to import it here so i wanted to import the link from the react router dom which we have installed in the beginning of the video so from the react router dom i want to import what i want to import the link link over here so this is the one thing i need to import it over there so along with this i want to import from the react router bootstrap so i'm going to tell imp enter so i'm going to tell here as a react or utr router and a bootstrap from the react router bootstrap i want to import the link container so i'll just tell i wanted to import the link container over here so container over here container over here okay so i'm going to import these two specific things from the react router dom i'm importing this from the react router bootstrap i'm just importing the link container over there okay so now uh, apart from this any other uh, models i need to import it right now i'm not getting anything into my mind so i'll just use these two specific uh, things over there okay so now coming back to here so how we are going to set up uh, the specific link containers things over there so that is the one thing over there right so now i'm just going to use we have a nav bar over here we have a specific nav bar and uh, we are having some kind of this e-commerce cart so whenever i click on to this what should happen that is the one thing right so for that i'm just going to bind everything with the link container over here so i'm going to tell i'm just going to use it as a link container over here so i'll just use as a link container it is going to take one attribute to so i'll just tell here as a two is equals to slash over here and i'm just going to close this specific link container here so i'm just going to close this specific link container to here so i'm going to use the same name that is a link container over here and i'm just going to close it over there and here we are not going to use the anchor tags over here so we are not going to use any kind of an anchor tag so what i'll do here is i'm just going to remove this specific anchor tag over there so i'm just going to remove this uh, specific anchor tag and uh, 
here also i'm just going to remove this one and we are not going to use any hrefs over there so we're not going to use any hrefs over here so now what i can do rather than using an anchor tank so what uh, else what is uh, the name you can uh, use it over there so i can use it anything but uh, you cannot use it this specific anchor tank so what i can do here is i'm just going to use uh, the nav link over there so i'll be using so for this rather than using like this uh, i'll be using uh, okay we are having okay let's see whether it is working or not let me save and okay if i refresh it here so you can see I'm getting an errors here. So use navigate might be used only to the react rotor DOM. Okay, something got imported maybe onto the top. Okay, nothing got imported. So let me use one thing uh, again over here. So I wanted to import in the reactify way. So I'm just going to import the few of the modules here. So I'm going to use the nav bar here. So I'm going to use the nav bar and I'm just going to use the uh, nav here. So nav bar and a nav. Then let's use this specific. I wanted to import this two specific thing from where? From the react bootstrap from specific react bootstrap i'm just going to import it over here so once i import these two things from to the react bootstrap now all i'll do here is i'm just going to use in the reactify way over here so what i'll be using here is rather wherever we have a nav so i'm just going to replace with the nav capital nav that is going to basically use the nav from the react bootstrap so i'm going to use the nav over here and wherever we are having a links wherever we are having a link so for that i'll be using as a nav dot link over there for uh, using for uh, wherever basically wherever we have anchor tag i'll be using as a nav dot link over there okay so now it is going to be a nav over here so we will do we have any closing tag for the nav that is the one more thing coming to the picture so right now we are using like this right so let me save this now let me save this and coming back to my home page so you can see it is telling me model build failed and nav bar is already been declared okay fine so where is it okay now bar is already has been declared okay got it so we need to give it here as a nav bar link over there so coming back here so this is basically a nav not a nav bar this is nav bar right so we are using imported a nav bar so we are going to replace with these things with the nav bar over here and the class name will remain as it is i'm not going to change here so basically whenever i am just going to click on to this uh, link container it should be go to the two url right so what i'll do here is i'm just going to cut this entire thing and i'm just going to paste inside a nav link over here so i'll be using a nav dot link link for this and i'm just going to paste as a class name and uh, i'm just going to close this specific nav link over here so i'm going to close this specific nav link over there and this has been enclosed with the link container over here right so that is the one thing so now i need to do one thing i need to just close this right i need to just close the closing tag of it now it has been enclosed with one specific data so i'm just going to format the data format document anyways i'll be giving you the code guys so not to worry please go these things are very critical so i know it is a little bit critical so you need to understand it here okay so basically we have replaced with navbar uh, link with the reactify way and wherever we have an anchor tag we need to just replace with this specific data so i'm just going to copy the same thing and uh, i'm just going to come back to here as well so i'm just going to remove these anchor tags i'm not going to use any anchor tags now so now what i'll be doing here is i'm just going to remove it i'm just going to paste this again and uh, here i'm just going to replace with the home here so even for the home it will be remain same so i'm just going to tell you as a home navbar never brand here it is been like so previously what it was uh, let me check control x so it was a nav link active it was there right so i'm just going to add it as the same thing nav navbar link active so i'll just use it here as a navbar link and a active over here so this time i'll just give it this as a home over here so i'm just going to save it for here as well okay so this will be the same thing now i'm going to remove this specific anchor tag here and again i'm just going to you remove this pan tags i don't require so i'm just going to format the document over here now i have a one more thing that is as a cart over here so wherever we have a anchor tag i need to replace with the nav dot link link and we need to remove the href we are not going to use any hrefs here so whenever we are going to work on to this it will be under the link container so we are going to use the link container over here and we are going to pass two attribute is equals to so whenever we are going to this it should go to the slash cart over there so i'm just going to close this specific link container here also so i'm just going to copy this link container and paste it here and just close this with the closing tag here that's it okay and here also i need to just close this one 
so now it is whenever i just click on to this uh, thing it is just going to take to the link container to the slash cart over there and same thing will happen for rest of the things so let's see whether it is working or not let me save and uh, come back to my home page if i refresh it now okay now you can see what is happening here so here it is telling me uh, an identify navbar has been already declared it is telling me the navbar has been already declared over here it is telling me navbar has been already declared okay so it is just uh, appending this uh, just it is getting mismatched with the names so i'll just tell it will rename this as a hadr header file over here so here i'm just going to rename with the header here h e a d e r header and i'm just going to export the h e a d r header over here so i'm just renaming the the specific file name come back to your app.js and here we are just going to rename with the h e a d r header i'm just going to import that header i'm going to remove this navbar from here okay this renaming this uh, ref, re, 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 refactoring it okay so once it is done now coming back to your uh, thing so if i refresh now you can see now i have only one error that is a uh, parsing identifier navbar is already declared so where it is getting the navbar.js okay so we don't have it so at that time what we can do here is control shift r is going to work no it is not working it so i'm just going to stop the server and i'm going to restart again okay so with whenever we are changing a file name so it is going to create some uh, difficulties for uh, fetching that thing into our front end part so i'm just restarting it over there okay so now once it is done come back to your uh, app.js file so in your app.js file i need to set up the routing part here so i need to just set up the routing parts here so how can you set up the specific routing into it here so in the app.js again i'm just going to import from the specific uh, react router dom so we are just going to use react router dom for navigation so from here react router dom i'm just going to import uh, the hash router i'm going to use a hash router as or the utr router so we need to use as a router here we are going to use hash router as router comma or the uts routes so we are just going to use routes comma or the ute route as well so we are using a router routes and a route over here and this is the one thing i am just going to import it so now i am just going to send all the things with the routers over there so whenever we get some data so how you need to traverse that is a, a thing we are just going to use here right so basically i wanted to display the header so for the header we have a header here and we have this one so basically when we are having a route like basically now we created here as a slash cart right so whenever i click on to the slash cart how the routing should take and which component should routing should take over here right that is the one thing here so in this i'm just going to create one specific folder into the components by the name that is screens over here so in this screens i'm just going to create one home screen home screen dot js so this is basically home screen dot js or fc so this is basically home screen it is going to be there so this home screen i wanted to use it into the routing part over here right so what i'll do here is i'm just going to remove everything from here right now and uh, yeah guys uh, so let's uh, see so here we have created a home screen right so we have got uh, these things now i need to import this thing into my app.js here so first and foremost i'm just going to import this uh, home screen component into my specific app.js file so once i import this one now we need to work with the routers over here so we are just doing what we are just returning something a div here so rather than returning a div so i'm going to return a router here so i'm going to use a a router over here so we are going to return one specific router so inside a router first and foremost i want to display as it is whatever the headers is there so whatever the headers we have imported the header file so i want to import the header as it is and i'm just going to close it here so i want to display the headers and uh, this specific header should be visible then i'm just going to create one routes over here so there will be a lot of routes so inside a routes i'm just going to add all the routes part over there so first route what is the first route i am going to add here so the first route here is uh, whenever we are having an exact path whenever we are having an exact path of slash okay i want to look on to which specific component here so i'll be using element is equals to so whenever i am having this path i need to just look on to the home screen over there okay i wanted to use the home screen in this specific page so i'm going to use it here as a home screen here and i'm just going to close this tag closing tag over here so the element i'm going to use it as a this specific thing 
and as it is i'm just going to close this specific route here as well okay so this will be the one specific route just save it over here and same as it is i wanted to create an another screen here so i wanted to create another screen for cart or login suppose i want to just create a route for one specific car uh, imagine i wanted to just create it for a login or a sign in something like that so let's create one specific screen now for this specific uh, signing or login over there okay so let's create another screen let like imagine i'm just going to create it here as a sign up screen sign up a screen dot js here okay and here i'm just going to use rfce this will be the sign up screen and uh, same as it is i'm just going to create another that is a login screen c origin screen dot js this will be the login screen dot js or fce login screen done come back to your app dot js here so i wanted to import that uh, sig and up sign up screen here and i wanted to import the lvg and login screen as well so once i import these two specific sign up screen and login screen i wanted to create the routes for this so i'm going to copy down same so whenever we are having a screen for a login whenever i go to this slash login it has to go to the login screen whenever i go to this slash uh, sign up it has to go to the specific screen that is a sign up screen okay whenever i am just routing back it has to go to the specific screens over there so that is what i have added it over here so once if it is done so once you have added all this uh, login screen sign up screen so it has to route it now now coming back to your header.js right so here also we need to add it how it has to route it right so that is one of the important thing to be noted like from my headers how can i import that specific things to that screens so for that uh for that specific thing let's uh, add that specific part as well so coming back to my specific screen for the we have added for the cart right so we have added for the cart let it be this right now there is no cart so now coming back to the new user we have a new user here right we have li tags and anchor tags here now whenever a user clicks on to this i'm just going to copy this link container as it is i'm just going to copy this link container as it is and i'm just going to paste it over here and i'm going to use as a nav link in the place of uh, this one so i'm going to use as a nav link and uh, this nav link is going to take last name and i'm going to remove this href tag and it will be as it is and i wanted to just close this specific nav link over here right so where i'm using okay here i'm using it so here is a new user so rather than a slash uh, this one i'm just going to use as a slash nav link over here it may be nav link over here so it is getting closed and i need to close the link container as well so i'm going to use close the specific link container so i'm just going to close the link container so it should go to this slash if it if he is a new user if he is a new user he has to go to the slash sig and up sign up over here when i click on to this one it will go to the slash sign up and automatically it will go to your app.js here wherever we have this component render we are going to use this one okay same way i wanted to do it for uh, this uh, sign up here as well so simply i'm just going to copy this one line of code and i'm just going to paste it uh, above this anchor tag okay then i'm just going to close this uh, link container and i'm just going to paste it after the anchor tag then i'm just going to replace the nav link to in the place of an anchor tag over here okay and apart from that i am going to this is a slash sign up itself that's everything is correct okay so that is the only thing and same thing i wanted to do it for uh, the login as well so i'm going to replace anchor tag with the login and i'm going to add the link container above the specific nav link over there okay so i'm just going to add this just close the specific link container over here and it will be basically a slash login over here so i'm going to use it as a slash lvg again login i don't know what other things are working and what things are not working i really don't know let me check you can see there is no error i have just saved it now if i just come back wow 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 you can see it is working guys if i click on to this you can see it is going to the sign up screen when i click on to this it is going to the sign up screen basically it is not working because we need to add uh, these link tags like a basically drop down links so for that i'll just go to the getbootstrap.com okay so i'll just go to the getbootstrap.com and i will go to the getbootstrap.com so i'll just visit this uh, documentation of it like we can go to the documentation so here we are having a script tags just copy the script tags come back to your uh, public file index.html and paste it in the bottom of it because 
we need to load these specific some uh, scripts also from this one so like for uh, popping up a jquery stuff so that will work maybe let's come back now if i refresh now so you can see now if i click here working guys it's working if i click login you can see it is going to the login if i just click on to the sign up yes it's going to the sign up page if i click on to the home yes it is going to the home screen you can see all the things are working as expected and here something is happening like home home is coming twice here so why it is happening let's check that part as well coming back to your home screen okay okay i'm getting home as a twice right so wait it is coming as a twice let's see that coming back to your uh, the components there we have created a header.js and here we are having a home home two times okay because of this okay let me remove this home basically we need to remove this from here so once i save this now you can see all the things are working as expected it is coming me the it is giving me the home screen that's an amazing thing right so we have set up the react router we have set up the react router dom we have set up the specific cards as well now i am going to create the card screen as well so let's create an, a screen for card screen so i'm going to create it as a crt card yes cren screen dot js and i'm just going to tell here as a rfc react bit component come back to your app dot js just import the specific card screen this is a sorry i need to just import the specific card uh, screen just we have imported just cut it here and and add the specific route so whenever we are going to this specific slash card whenever we are going to the slash card it has to go to the card screen that's it same thing come back to your home screen sorry not home in the header.js file here we are having a card where is our cart is here right so whenever we are having a slash it will go now when i click on to the cart now you can see it is going to the cart screen when i click on to the home it is coming back to the home screen if i click on to the sign up it is going to the sign up screen and uh, it is getting closed as well so this is how the things are working fine so now we have added this specific data now anyhow i want to display all the products i want to display all the products into the home screen over there so this is all one part is left okay guys so that specific part i'll catch you with the next session so let's see in the next session how we can uh, render the specific products into the section over there take care bye bye